Hi everyone, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here with a new PB&J card class. And this is a number seven in my handmade holiday video series. And in this video series, I have been kind of breaking down my design process that helps me limit my supplies, limit decision fatigue, but also keep my motivation to get in there and use my supplies and enjoy my hobby, keep that motivation high. So today's video is all about making gift tags. And for the holidays, I love making gift tags so much. And I also feel like it's a great way to really get in there and use your stash, or if you've purchased some new things, to really get in there and get them used. So what I do to start this off is to gather or to limit my supplies. And so what I'm looking for when I'm making tags is images that I think are going to be really bold and stand out on the tag. So first I have my tagged creative die from Penny Black. So this cuts the tag. It has multiple size tags. It even has that whole reinforcer. Lots of different things. I'll list and link all the Penny Black supplies down in the description box for you below. I'm going to cut all my tags from that. Then I'm looking for images and a variety of images. So I've pulled these for some really kind of cute and fun stamps. I also want to do some sort of charming stamps so I've pulled these ones. Again everything's listed and linked below. I want to keep some variety in what I'm doing so I'm also going to pull in some sort of nature or scenic type stamps. So I'm pulling those in because I'm going to make a lot of tags and if they're all the same I'm going to get bored. So I'm going to pull in some variety here. So those are sort of the nature scenic ones. I'm also going to make some with some die cuts. So I've got like our antlers die there. And our, let's see here, that one is our berries and basket. And I've got my Canson 140 pound watercolor paper. So as you can see, these are all stamp sets that I've used throughout this Handmade Holidays video series. And I'm getting a chance now to use them even more. Or if there were any images on there I didn't get a chance to use yet, now is my chance. So I'm going to batch or assembly line style these tags as much as possible. So I'm going to start by doing all of my stamping. So I'm stamping in my Misty Stamp Positioning Tool. This, These are all on the tags that were cut from that Canson 140 40 pound cold press watercolor paper. I stamped these cutesy um, images in Ranger Archival watering can ink. So it's just a little bit lighter than a black so it's not quite as stark. So I've went ahead and stamped all of those. Then these sort of like light sketchy charming images, I'm going to stamp those with gray flannel. And the main thing in choosing my inks, this is a memento ink, these are waterproof so I'm going to be painting so I want them to be waterproof. But I do find going with something just a little bit lighter than a black just makes them look a little bit more special to me and a little bit more artsy. I'm using a Pit Artist pen here to darken up her eyes. This is a waterproof pen and it has a very small journaling tip. And so these are the ones I've stamped with that gray flannel memento ink and you can see where I've added just a little bit of that pen detail on both of those. Now I'm going to stamp some of the more natural nature type images and I'm stamping these using memento ink in the color of toffee crunch. This is give, going to give them a little bit of a no line look. I also have a mask here I'm going to place over the top of that cabin. And I've used that mask before as you can see and I just stick them right back on the front of my um, stamp set to save them and use them as many times as I can. Now I've got this tree from that set that I'm going to stamp this little scene. And again stamping that using the Memento Toffee Crunch ink. I can remove the mask and I've got a nice little scene there. So now these are all of the sort of nature inspired ones that I went ahead and stamped. And I did use some of that gray flannel in the background for those birch trees. 
And then I wanted to do some die cutting tags as well, so I just went ahead and cut these from that same watercolor paper and did all that die cutting in one setting. So now that I've done all of my stamping and my die cutting, I'm ready to do my painting. So I'm going to be painting using Distress Ink reinkers used as watercolors. I've got my palette of colors there, my water, and then I'll have a paper towel also off to the side. Now if you want to see a video with lots more detail about my watercoloring technique, I will link that for you down in the YouTube description box below. But now I'm going to go ahead and start painting. So what's great about this is I've used a variety of images, a variety of styles within those images, and everything is stamped and ready to go. So whenever I'm in the mood or I have time to sit down and paint, I can. Everything's ready. I can have my paint sitting out, the stack of tags that are ready to go, and it's just very inviting. And I find I stay motivated to make a lot of tags because they're all a little bit different. So I'm going to go ahead and paint in um, all of the stamps and images. As you can see, my basic technique in doing this is I pick up the watercolor ink from my palette onto my paintbrush, and at that point it's very concentrated, and I'm going to put that down where I want the color to be the darkest. Then I'm going to go over to that water, rinse off my brush, pat it on the paper towel, then go back and blend out that darker color. And that kind of gives me that transition from dark to light within the image. So I'm just going to continue painting these. Now the charm and the style that is within these illustrations, these stamps are such high quality illustrations for the stamps, that if you're new to painting or you're new to adding color, coloring things in, even if you just put a flat wash, like a flat wash of brown across this, or if you're coloring with markers or colored pencils and you just do very basic coloring, it's still going to look finished and it's still going to look very nice because the image itself is such a high quality image. So don't be afraid to do your coloring however you like to do it, however it makes you happy to color. If shading brings you stress, then just paint it flat. It'll still look really, really nice and it's still a really fun handmade touch to use for gift giving. Now you'll also notice as I stamped my tags that I didn't stamp the images right in the center and I even often have part of the image extending off the edge of the tag. This just makes it more interesting. It also leaves room that you can do your to and from on there if you want to. I'm also going to show you at the end of this video how you can make a hinge tag so you can stamp um, or write a message on the inside. This also leaves a place to add a sentiment if you plan to stamp some type of sentiment onto your tag as well. I do find when I am doing cards or tags, the more I've used an image or a set in particular, the more likely I am actually to return to it in the future, even like next year at Christmas time. And so if you find at the end of making all your holiday cards that you have some sets, maybe you haven't inked up yet or that you've only used one time, I feel like the tags is a really great way to just get them inked up, just paint them in again and they will become more a part of your repertoire the more that you use them. At least that's how it is for me. I also feel like this is like a very decisionless type of crafting so there's no like having to plan how am I going to put this on the card or what layers am I going to add. It's just simple. It's just the tag. So I'm just finishing up painting him in and then I will set that off to the side and I'll just move on to painting another tag. Now I did make a card with her in one of the videos in this video series of Handmade Holidays and it's so fun. I love images like this where just by changing the color choices it just gives it a whole different look. So what I love about this image in particular is her coat and her hat. 
and by changing the color choices on those it just looks totally different I feel like I want to make like 10 tags with her and do her coat in 10 different colors and just see all of the different ways that this could look and that might be something that you find you want to do for your tags is where instead of stamping multiple images maybe you have a really versatile image like this and you're going to stamp the same one multiple times and paint it in different colors each time to stop to help it from becoming boring You'll also notice with her where I've stamped her going off the bottom and the sides of the tag. So a large image that's larger than your tag itself actually can be really dynamic when you stamp it onto the tag. So don't feel like you have to, to go through your stash and look for really small images. You can choose larger images. This actually ended up being one of my favorite tags and I think that's one of the reasons is because it really fills up the space on the tag. So I'm painting her hat and again all of the exact colors I'm using of this Distress Ink reinkers used as watercolors, the ink colors, everything will be listed for you down in the YouTube description box below. My paintbrush, the paper, everything's down there for you. Now at this point I also am not doing too much thinking and I'm using my palette that I've made all these cards with. So you'll notice that like for instance on her hat and these gloves I'm using Evergreen Bow and Forest Moss Distress Ink. Those are colors I've used on other cards because I'm just using up what I have in my palette off to the side that I've been using for all of these different projects. We'll add a little bit of color here to her face. You can see as you add color by stamping this in that gray flannel memento ink it gives it almost like it was sketched out with a pencil and I really like that look in particular for these images. I'd love to know, do you make any handmade tags for the holidays? Leave me a comment down in the YouTube description box below. And if you don't, I hope this maybe inspires you to give them a try. If you don't typically use them, you can always layer up a tag onto the front of a card. So if you aren't into making tags, you can certainly use these techniques and these stamps um, and even the tag itself on a card as a layer. Here I'm just adding a little bit of color to her snowflakes. It doesn't need to be exact, just a touch here and there. While it's wet I can drop in more color to darken it up. And then I just painted right over the top of those stems and those berries. By stamping it in that light color of ink, you can just paint your color right on top. Now many of these tags can also be used for like New Year's gifts or you know when you don't see somebody right on the holidays and you give them a gift later. I love that they have that just winter theme and so you can use them not just for Christmas even on a winter birthday gift you could use them. So I'm moving on and I'm going to paint one of the natural tags. I'm not going to show you all of them or you would be so bored with me. <laughs> but I thought I'd put in just a few of the different styles for you. Now you can see with that memento ink and the toffee crunch when I paint over it with the distress ink reinkers used as watercolors it kind of takes on the color of the paint that goes on top of it. So it's it's a great sort of faux no line watercolor look. Pretty easy to do and I just like how it looks as opposed to like a dark black outline. It just looks a little bit more natural and a little bit more handmade. And 
and then we'll move on to the tree here. Now I wanted this tree to look as if it still is having some of the snow. So I'm putting my color in sort of where the branches would be going underneath another branch, if that makes sense. So towards the trunk. And I'm trying to remember to leave a little bit of the tips of those branches white. I'll put down some of that evergreen bough and then add a little bit of the forest moss distress ink reinker. And it certainly does not need to be perfect. So we want I want this to have a hand painted sort of casual watercolor look to it. So I'm not worried about if I go over another branch or if it's just perfectly um, painted in or in the lines. I think that just sort of adds to that watercolor effect and keeps me from going crazy. <laughs> but this tree, I use this on um, a card with one of the teddy bears in another video. I love this tree and it once you paint it once you want to keep reaching for it because it just is really really pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and dry that. Just use my heat tool to speed up the process because I'm not very patient. And then I'm going to add a little bit of shadowing here up on the roof for all that snow up there. These tags are really fun too when you've got them all stamped and ready to go. Whenever you want to turn on like your Christmas movies and um, do some painting and some crafting, this is a really fun way. I know with a lot of Christmas card making, we get it done almost before the holiday season is on us. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes. But with these tags, you could make them a little bit more last minute because if you don't get them all finished, it's really not a big deal. You can just not use them. So these are kind of fun to do during the actual holidays themselves because you can have your Christmas movie going, some hot chocolate, and just have this little project that um, is ready to go, is ready for paint. And make them sort of during the holiday season. Just adding a little bit of shadowing down here on the ground. And then while I have my paints out kind of sticking with that theme of batching or assembly line style as I go I'm gonna also paint my die cuts now you could cut these just cut them from you know colored cardstock but I like painting them and I like the ease of just sitting down and color cutting everything from white without having to think about what color I want them from or dig through colored paper it's easier for me to paint than to dig through colored paper so I'm just going ahead and painting these I also think it gives them sort of that unevenness and more of that handmade look more of like an artsy kind of look. This is that basket that comes with that um, die cut set. I love this basket. Just adding a little more ink to my palette. And I'm just putting the darker color along the edges. And then I can kind of with a fairly dry brush go in and lift some of the color from the center. So now that I have all of the tags painted, I'll give you a look at each one. With smaller images, it's kind of fun to do like repeated stamping like I did with those, uh, the hedgy and the stockings. So those are some of those sort of cutesy ones. Here are some of those charming or fashion sort of style ones. And then the more natural or elegant looking designs. and the die cuts and I decided to leave the um, deer from the antler set just white and you'll see why when we get along a little bit further. So to finish these off I'm going to do some ink blending to the background. So this is just Memento Toffee Crunch ink. I'm starting off of the edge and working my way on focusing mainly up at the top of the tag and I just put it on that white paper because it's sometimes hard to see when you're working on a black um, surface. So if that you find that too and then you put your tag out and you're like whoa that's really dark you might find you want to work on a light color like a scratch paper surface so I'm using a mix of that toffee crunch some broken china distress ink 
And then here's another tip. If you've done some repeated stamping, if you just take a gray marker, I'm using an alcohol-based marker, but you could even use paint, and just go along one side of the image. It will give it a more of a finished look and almost a 3D effect. So I find that's just one way I like to finish off just a very simple repeated stamp design. Here I'm going to do some more inking. I've got some forest moss distress ink. You notice I'm pulling a lot of the same ink colors for the background inking as I did for my painting. And then you can also add just subtle tone on tone stamping. So there I did just a little bit of inking up on one side of the tag and then I'm stamping one of those scenic stamps just off the edge. You can also um, color paint those reinforcing hole reinforcements and that adds just another finishing touch at the top. I did that for some of them but not for all. So we'll take a look here now at these tags after I've done some of that inking, some stamping on there. There's just some inking and the reinforcements. I also did that on these two, inking along the sides and up at the top. So I don't always go all the way around the whole tag, but just like a certain corner, balance out if the image is on one side or just along the top. You can see that there on those natural images. Now for the tags with the dies, I decided I wanted to use our Stick and Shine. This is Shimmering Tune. If you haven't seen this before, this is a newer product line from Penny Black. It allows you to add foil to your projects without any heat or expensive tools. So it's like a rub-on. So you peel off the backing sheet and you're going to use, I'm using our applicator tool to press this onto the tag and then I will peel that up and it transfers a sticky design onto your tag. Then you can lay your foil shiny side up and rub that with the applicator tool and it's that simple. Now when I did apply this, everything I used the watercolor paper but for this I did use a smooth cardstock so like a Nina Solar White cardstock because it will apply best on a smooth cardstock. And then what I like to do is do some ink blending over the top just to give it kind of a tone on tone look. So I'm just inking right on top of that design. So you can see there that shine. Then I just hand trimmed a little snowbank and I've added some foam tape. I did do a little bit of inking on those dies. I'll layer them on. Remember they can be bigger than the tag and then just trim off the excess. So this creates like a really shiny, more elegant looking tag. There's another way to use your dies. Here for this basket, I'm going to tape that on. I'm not going to use the full height of the tree just use part of it so I can trim that. So you can make it suit whatever size tag or card that you are making. Again I just hand trimmed a little snow bank for the bottom just to ground that. And I'm going to do some more stick and shine. So this is the snow from the snow shimmer set and it's got some really great just individual snowflakes you can add. And so I'm just going to Rub that onto the design, place down my foil, shiny side up, rub that with the applicator tool, and it is that simple to add some really beautiful snowflakes to the background. There you can see some of the options, lots of different sizes and designs. So I'll add just a few more on here. I find this is so fun, it's kind of addicting <laughs> to add this foil on here because it's so easy to do and it's just so fun and um, adds really adds a lot. There you can see. And then again on that one I just inked over the top of it using that Memento Toffee Crunch ink and just added some gems and some pearls to the center of the snowflakes. So there's a look at that finished tag. 
So these are the two tags featuring the die cuts. Again, by varying the images and die cuts, I don't get bored with this process. It keeps me motivated to keep wanting to come back and enjoy the process. Now I wanted to show you how you can make a hinge tag. So if you score the top of a tag, and this is just that die cut from Penny Black, put adhesive only above the score line, then put your completed tag on top. It will then open up. So you could put a gift card in there, you could write your message, you could stamp a sentiment, and it stands up as well. So let's take a look at all of the finished tags. I've added some sentiment, some stamping to these. I'd love to know which is your favorite. I think mine is the girl that from the snowy bouquet stamp set. I also really love this one too. <laughs> That's also another favorite. I don't know, maybe I like them all. <laughs> but really simple process, really fun to do, a great way to use some of your favorites or get some of the ones you didn't get a chance to use stamped and colored. Here are some of the more natural or elegant ones. Let's see if I can fit them all in here. bird. Again, same thing with a snowflake stamped up at the top. A little bit of inking. And then here are those ones with the shimmer, the stick and shine sh shimmer, as well as the die cuts. I will put photos of each of these up here at the end of the video too. And I hope you've enjoyed this video series. This is the last in the handmade holiday video series. A series of seven videos sharing my sort of techniques and approach to making lots of handmade designs without becoming overwhelmed and staying motivated and without becoming bored. I appreciate all of you who have been following along for each of these videos, leaving such kind words and kind comments. If you enjoyed this series, be sure that you subscribe to our channel, hit that bell notification so you're notified when we upload new videos, and also be sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks again for watching and happy stamping.